Hi. I think that we often think of torture as being something that's done by rogue states or political torture, and we often feel helpless because we think that there is very precious little that we can do about it. And I also used to feel this way until one day I walked into a Cambodian prison and I met a 12-year-old boy who had been tortured and denied access to counsel for stealing a bicycle. And what was ironic about the situation is that the, the Cambodian government said, he's not a political prisoner. If you want to help him, go ahead. And there I began to realize that although the world focuses mostly on political prisoners, which is very important, political prisoners are only 5% of the people who are being tortured. 95% are actually just everyday people in broken down legal systems. So of the 113 countries that torture, 93 countries have all passed laws that say you have a right to a lawyer, a right not to be tortured. But the problem is that torture continues in large part because it is the cheapest form of investigation and we don't have the resources to build it. And so in the year 2000, I founded International Bridges of Justice to begin to find ways of providing early access, systematic early access to counsel for people throughout countries. And we started doing advisement rights campaigns, building pilot legal defender centers, and seeing what a difference they made. But the real 180 happened for me when I used to tell people, we used to go into Burundi and Rwanda and Cambodia and China, all the countries we work in, and talk to the lawyers and say, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna change history case by case because you'll implement the laws. You'll, have, you'll provide early access to counsel and then people will no longer be tortured. But we thought it was a really, really slow process and we recognized it would take us a long time. And then one day all the defenders from everywhere, and you keep hearing about the boy in Nigeria or what, who's doing whatever, and that's what happened to us at International Bridges of Justice. People started to say, how can we use technology? Let's use technology because we can accelerate. We were working in China and they said, we're doing these trainings, 100 people, but we could do maybe 1,000 at the same time if we start to use e-learning. We started looking at how we could connect people. And lawyers said to us, you know, we're isolated, but maybe you could connect us. And so we started finding ways of doing justice maker programs where it was only one person in Switzerland giving $5,000 to Harshi in Sri Lanka, but she managed to get a woman out of jail who had been there for nine years but had never seen a lawyer, and after being in court 53 times, she still was in jail until Harshi came to her. There are all these different ways that we started seeing that technology was the force multiplier to actually make it happen. So for us, and I know I only have 25 seconds left, we are in the process of finding ways that we can really add light to the prophetic imagination of all these defenders on the ground who are really working every day courageously to end torture as an investigative tool in their own countries. Um, I would ask that you find ways that we could do it technologically. We're just on the tip, but we realize that we are like walking on golden treasure, but we have to find ways to unearth it beneath us. We're having a breakfast manifesto tomorrow morning, and if you can, I'd love for you to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Karen.